Hi everybody, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story in this one, and the story is about a crash. Um, this is about the last crash, and where I was and what I was doing, and, and why I think I've got a little bit of authority when I'm talking to you about crashes and market conditions and mortgage market and things like that. Let me explain to you where I was back in 2007, 2008. I was a marketing director working for one of the largest um, mortgage firms in the UK and um, we had about 400 staff a company called Mortgage Times head office in Tottenham Court Road um, I had my own office I had lots of staff uh, the company grew from really nothing to five four hundred odd people in five six years so um, it was you know boom time within the mortgage industry everybody was making money there's lots of lenders out there um, and so everything was great, you know, I was getting lots of corporate events, I had a big expense account and, you know, uh, everything was hunky-dory, invited to lots and lots of different um, banks, inviting me to various things. And I'll tell you a story about just before the crash, I got invited by then called HBOS, which owned Halifax VM Solutions, and they took me to Monaco. So I was in the Monaco Grand Prix to watch the Grand Prix. And it was wonderful. There were many, many distributors like ours, um, probably about 20 of us in total. Um, all expenses paid, you know, night before on a yacht, had a party. So everything is great, you know, and, and, and I'm, you know, a 30 year old um, uh, chap sitting there, you know, watching the Grand Prix in Monaco and think, well, this is all great. This is wonderful, you know, and we're making lots and lots of money. I was making good money. And the company was making very good money. Um, in fact, we were we were launching to become a mortgage lender at the time. So we were a distributor. So we were a sort of a halfway house for brokers as well as the the networks. Uh, sorry, the, the the banks. So we did a lot of the administrations of the behalf of the banks, and we had our own brokers there as well. So we dealt with about two three thousand brokers nationwide who were linked into us. Um, so yeah, everything was great. And then what happened? So um, just after the, the Grand Prix, I came back and started hearing rumblings about troubles in the US. Um, and at the time we were dealing with, you know, 30, 40, 50 hundreds of lenders, essentially. Um, and they told us that, right, OK, there is some trouble, but I think we're going to be OK. So we thought, well, OK, we'll find business as usual. We were just carrying on, you know, doing, doing what we did. Uh, and then um, I remember going to, and then started things started happening, you know, Northern Rock started happening. So it started affecting us here and other lenders that were funded by the US uh, entities uh, have withdrawn, started withdrawing their products. So all of a sudden, on a daily basis, banks were going, we're no longer lending. We were thinking, well, what's going on? There's, there's, there's a problem here. Um, and um, I remember speaking, at, I, went, I went to another, I was one of an awards dinner, and I was talking to one of the main guys at one of the main high street banks, I'm not going to name them, uh, for legal purposes I might get sued, but I remember asking, me and my boss, we were talking to him, and I said, you know, what do you think, you know, this, this, this doesn't look good, you know, we, you know, we had businesses, you know, we had three, four hundred staff, half of them were on a six months um, notice period, so, you know, it was, it was, it was going to be big problems for us if the market was challenged. So we said, yeah, you guys need to cut down, you know, there are there are gonna be some volatile conditions, but we'll be absolutely fine. And this was a top bank, it was one of the biggest banks. And so oh, we'll be absolutely fine, you know, we're well, well uh, structured to, you know, deal with this, such things like this. And we thought, well, okay, well, as long as they're gonna be okay, and everybody else, all the other banks that were around were saying, oh yeah, no, we're gonna be fine, but you know, there might be some troubles with the smaller guys and pointing their fingers at somebody else. So what happened, about two weeks later, the same bank had to be bailed, had to be bailed out. So um, basically, and this guy was the top guy. He was the top guy and he was saying to us, it was gonna be great. So never believe um, the moral of the story. The moral of the story is that now we've had these problems. Uh, some of the lenders are sending correspondence to us, some of the brokers out there, some of the estate agents, the government. They're all saying everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. You know, there might be some turbulence ahead, but you're going to be fine. Lenders are saying the market's opening up again. Estate agents saying, yeah, yeah, the properties, property market's back up. I don't believe any of them. Um, I think you've got to be cautious. Um, we've been through this, and I think this time around is going to be a lot worse. Although fundamentally, we were in the eye of the storm in 2007, 8 because it was to do with mortgages, and and I will explain actually what it was to do with, but. Um, was fundamentally to do with mortgages and funding, um, where this time around it, it's not. Obviously, it's got to do with COVID. However, um, this is more serious because it's affecting real um, 
real jobs, real lives straight away. Okay, where the mortgage crisis, you know, was to do with a funding crisis. It was, you know, people were eventually not being able to pay their mortgages, and 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 then there was a sort of a snowball effect. Um, this is going to be a lot more serious. So I think there are going to be great opportunities. Don't, don't get me wrong, you know, uh, for me personally, it wasn't a great phase because my company that I worked for had to fold. Um, I had to then, me and Richard, who worked for that company, set up Niche Advice. And we've always been very cautious with our business. We've stayed at small. Uh, we've never sort of ventured out too much um, out, of, out of our own comfort zones. But there were a lot of people that made money, but I saw so many people lose money out of it. People that were linked to properties. I'm talking, you know, I had clients uh, throughout the first few years that were lords that were losing their portfolios. Um, so because a lot of it was done on a commercial basis, and this is my worry. A lot of the deals that were done in the last couple of years have been because of rental calculations and because of you know the, the, the conditions. They've swayed into the commercial realms. Now, when you're dealing with commercial lenders, it's a different ball game. The way they treat the clients when there is a downturn, the way they treat assets, it's completely different. So uh, be cautious. The, that, that, that's what I would say. Now, going on to why... Um, the crash happened last time around. You know, it was to do with subprime. It was to do with bad loans. But fundamentally, it was to do with um, a lot of it abroad. Now, in the UK, yes, there were self-cert mortgages going on. Yes, if you put 25% deposit down, the lender didn't ask you any questions. There were lots and lots of things that have changed and, 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 and for the better. But there was a lot of... Um, lending that, you know, shouldn't be... It shouldn't have happened. Um, but... If you look, if you speak to some of the lenders now, um, you know, some of those self-cert books are actually performing relatively well over the years. Their mortgages have been paid up um, because the difference was, uh, and, and the difference was from last time to this time round, last time round, the government came in and said, we will not allow property prices to drop. Okay, so what happened was there were some people who had managed to get onto the property ladder who bought two, three, four, five, six, seven at that time where property prices were lower. They were actually, they did quite well out of it because whatever happened with the funding problems, the property market prices actually stayed quite stable. Yes, they went down a little bit, but they stayed stable. So what happened was, if you look at the high street now, it's full of estate agents, okay? Estate agents did very, very well. Okay, I was actually part of a um, initiative um, uh, where we we dealt with a, a large, well, the world's largest estate agency firm, brand Century Twenty One, were tied in with us, and we were going around um, the country telling mortgage brokers that they should become estate agents because it'd be good for the for the business. Um, funny enough, when that market went down in two thousand seven and eight, the the people that turned into estate agents actually did really well. Because that market, the rental market, and the property market, and the transaction market, actually was pretty good, okay? And they did very, very well, and I think for the last 10 years, the stages have done, have done wonderfully. Um, I think that's going to change this time around. I think, fundamentally, people's uh, livelihoods are at stake. And what happens is, when people get nervous, and the economy, and then you turn on the news, and it's all about job losses, and people dying, and stuff, that hits confidence. And I think, this time round, um, although it's not going to take us 10 years to recover, I think it's going to be a bigger problem for us because it's really hitting the, 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 the economy straight away. It's hitting people's pockets straight away, hitting confidence straight away. So there are opportunities where you can buy properties, uh, I think, in a couple of months' time, um, where people have to sell. OK, uh, and that, that's the opportunity to pick them up. And there are a lot of people sitting on the sidelines that have got money. I've got lots of clients of mine at the moment that are refinancing things and putting things on hold. A mortgage offer is valid for six months. So they, they are getting some of their buy to lets. They're remortgaging them. They're keeping them there. And if there's an opportunity, they can move on it because essentially they become cash buyers because their mortgage is done. OK, so opportunities. If you're a portfolio landlord, great opportunity. Refinance a couple of your buy to lets. Don't take the money out. Let them sit there and then you can become cash buyers because you don't then have to go and go through the whole process. So because you've got the remortgages done, I think new build sector is going to go through a, um, uh, some problems. I think a lot of those new builds were historically overpriced. I think the developers um, took the advantage because of the help to buy scheme, bumped their prices up by 20 percent. I think that's all going to come down. Um, so if you've bought a new build and, and I think there are fundamental problems with the help to buy anyway, because um, the government and, and the help to buy scheme was banking on prices going up. And what happens if it doesn't? So if you bought a normal house and you decided to move, um, so for example, you said, um, I can't afford this mortgage, I can't afford this help to buy mortgage, 
I'm going to rent this property out. Okay. If it was a normal house, the lender will allow you to rent it. Okay. And you'd be fine. If you're in a help to buy, the lender will not allow you to rent it or the help to buy scheme will not allow you to rent it. So there are problems of all those people that are sitting in help to buy. Um, I think their property prices are going to come down. Um, and, and, and I think, you know, when you're, when you're selling a property, a, a new build property, you're in com competition with a lot of others. Um, I think commercial sector is going to get really hit. Um, you know, people, the shopping sector. I, th I think, again, commercial sectors we have been where um, a lot of people that are a lot more experienced have got into. So they've started off with a buy to let, maybe bought a couple of buy to lets and then got into maybe a HMO and then gone into semi-commercial, you know, bought uh, a, a couple of flats and a shop and then maybe moved into uh, bigger commercial transactions. I think those type of clients, the commercial guys, that are heavily geared are going to find it very, very hard because I think prices will tumble. They always do. They they did last time around, and that's where it gets really serious. The shit is really going to get serious on the commercial side. Um, in terms of residentials, I think there's going to be some really good bargains out there. Um, if you are a person that sold up or maybe you're sitting to buy and we're going in competition with 30 other people four months ago in buying a you know a semi-detached house in London. I think this is a good opportunity for you to sit things out, get your mortgage sorted out, and there is an opportunity to buy. I think also um, there are different schemes people need to look at. See, I'm doing a lot more self-employed mortgages based on net profit rather than salary and dividends. And that's really important. That saves a lot of money for some people, okay? Because essentially you're not taking your income out of the business and paying your dividends tax on it. You're leaving your money in. However, the banks will lend on that profit. So lots of self-employment stuff happening. People are rejigging things. I think there are some big problems that are going to come across when um, uh, in the next uh, couple of months and how lenders treat it is going to be important. One, payment holidays. Those of you that payment holidays, residential, you're okay. If you're a portfolio landlord and you've taken payment holidays, let's say you've got 10 properties and you've taken payment holidays on five of them, you're going to find it hard getting a mortgage. I don't know for how long, I think, but certainly right now, lenders are asking me questions like, has this client taken any payment holidays? Are they about to take any payment holidays? Can they guarantee they won't give us any payment holidays? So, and, and what they're looking at is people, they're trying to work out whether you are a person who's taken a payment holiday because you could, and you actually had some money and you were not in, in distress, or were you in distress? If you were in distress, I don't think they want to lend to you. So there's problems around that. Also around payment holidays, I know some clients have furloughed themselves, they're self-employed, they've furloughed themselves, or they've been furloughed because they're still self-employed, but, but the main company has been um, furloughed them. That's gonna have impacts on their income. A lot of the self-employed clients tend to go for last year's accounts. So they want to go by the latest year's accounts. Well, latest year's accounts are gonna be horrible next time around because you know they haven't been trading for a couple of months. Um, so, uh, and also the impacts will be around people that get paid in commission and bonus. Well, what's that going to do for most of the people that would have dived? In fact, a lot of the lenders do not even take any commissions anymore. So they will not take any commission and, uh, and bonus. There are still quite a number of lenders that will, I have to say, but I've seen some high street lenders say, we're not going to take any commission or bonus or additional income over time at all. Okay. So these problems are going to be, you know, you may think, oh, I'm in a good position. I've, I've got my deposit. I'm going to go and buy. But there could be problems around this, around how lenders are treating your income now. So moral of the story is things are going to get serious. Um, there are some opportunities out there. I think we can work together to try to make sure what is a good opportunity and what's not. Um, and niche advice, we're mortgage brokers. Uh, I'm an independent mortgage broker. We're whole of the market. I'm not in to sell you any development finance or development, sorry. I'm not here to sell you properties. I'm not here to make money out of a fund for you. All I will do, and I will stick in my lane, is I will advise you on mortgages or finance or property finance uh, or development finance or conversion finance or commercial finance. But I don't go close to anything else in terms of you know, trying to sell you properties and, you know, tell you about how to become a millionaire and all sorts of things like that. I'm not interested in that. All I want to do is write my business, which is mortgage business, help my clients as best as I can. And hopefully um, you guys can be here for the journey. Please like and subscribe. Please share these videos if you can. It would really, really help me. If you find this useful, go on Facebook, go on Twitter and share these videos for me. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe and keep safe.